Mr. President. All right, we do have a quorum, so we'll go ahead and proceed with the meeting. This is our regular April meeting. We're going to welcome everyone out to the meeting. Uh, the first thing that we have on here is our consent agenda. Second. Uh, we have a motion second to approve the consent agenda. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed no. Okay. Approved. Second thing is delegations. Anyone here like to address the board? No delegation, so we'll move on to approval of the first draft, the 2015-16 budget. Back to motion to approve. I'll second. Right, we have a motion second to approve the budget. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed no. Approved. The next thing that's uh, on here is we have to have <coughs> approval each year for participation in special programs. And uh, do we need to cover? I mean, it covers all of these, right? Yes, sir. Everything. So y'all see it's going to be, uh, is it title one, two, three, and five? Five. Okay. Uh, ESEA, IDEA. Perkins, Child Nutrition, Extended Contract, Technology, <coughs> Coordinated School Health, and Pre-K. I make a motion we approve the plan for fiscal year 2015-16 under No Child Left Behind and the Elementary and Secondary Education Act. And authorize the superintendent to file any necessary budget provisions, attendance, or transfer requests. Second. Okay, so we have a motion to approve these uh, Special programs and to approve the plans for fiscal year 2015-16 under No Child Left Behind and Elementary School Secondary Education Act, and authorize the superintendent to file any necessary budget provisions, addendums, and transfer requests. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Folks, no. It is approved. And the next thing is going to be. Uh, Policy revisions and program. I'm going to let you kind of cover what we need to do on that. Gentlemen, if you remember last meeting where during that request for any delegations, Lori Butler, who represents the uh, Teachers Education Association, had mentioned some legislation that at that time was current. And one of those comments that she had made was with uh, the, the lobby position about students being tested too much. And we are under a lot of testing. You know, this week finishes our TCAP uh, today, and uh, tomorrow represents the end of it as far as the makeups. But we have three tested areas this week English art, language arts, math, and science. And then there's a social studies pilot that's going to be offered end of this week into next week. Uh, that's a new structure, new format that's going to be uh, uh, electronically driven. Next year starts what they call the TN ready assessments. It's going to be the replacement to the TCAP, replacement to the end of course test that we have been using for years. And it's going to be given in two parts. The first part happens after the first 120 days. The second part happens at the end of the school year. So there are additional testing um, cycles within next year as mandated. And then in addition to that, response to intervention squared response to intervention and response to enrichment or instruction, uh, which is another state program, does require what's called progress monitoring and also uh, universal screening. Uh, universal screening identifies where students have gaps in their learning of basic skills in math and language arts. And then the progress monitoring is throughout the year as those uh, interventions are offered to the students to help close those gaps. The progress monitoring reflects whether those interventions are working. So, all that to be said, all that I've described is the mandated testing that is required. And this is not considering the testing that teachers do to assess how well students are learning what they're teaching. Now, it's not in addition to, that's part of the same program. But reflecting on what Ms. Butler had said at our last meeting, I have asked, and there's no other districts around to look at this, but it's something to think about is the need that we have, perceived need, based on tradition, of offering midterms and finals. 
because we already know for students who are at the high school who are doing end of course testing the exemption policies that we've had the testing cycles that we had for finals you can't exempt one of those those are required tests for those that are taking AP courses or dual enrollment courses those are required the lower grades your K through uh, fifth grade they don't do in, or they don't do final exams or midterms like the high school and the junior high do. So this is really affecting just two age groups, the six through eight and the nine through twelve. What I'm proposing is that taking consideration of that, that we do have to do some mandated tests and to diminish some of the things that we just do out of tradition that do take away from valuable instructional time that we could utilize better to prepare for these tests. It's my recommendation that we look at revising our plan school or school board policy plan regarding how we uh, test for midterms or semester exams midterms and finals and it would affect those two uh, policies that are in your packet now it's not something we have to do now I just want to put that out there on the table for you to read reflect on and then if we can do this at a later date Okay, we the policy. Sure, be glad to. <clears throat> but that just gives you something to yeah. look Yeah. Okay, I guess my thinking is you and some of the supervisors would get together, kind of make a recommendation of yeah. what we need to yeah. do. Yeah, sure. Right? Do it. Yeah. 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 We could do it. Yeah. I'm just <clears throat> saying that they don't should be the ones really that know what Casey and you're saying, okay, we're going to need to change this to improve. So, you know, that, that's our goal is to improve. So, this is where I think. Everybody wants you to look into it and see what yeah. we can do. Okay. Very good. Okay, that was the actual last thing on the agenda. Uh, I did want to ask about, we were talking about the plaque, the sports plaque. What, did everybody get a chance to look at the sports plaque out there beside anything? Or? I went out there every day. I, I like Shane's idea of putting it on a on a stand. If you come through the gate right in the center of the driveway, right where the water runs, put it on. Oh, it's like kind of there right over the What? <laughs> no, tell me. What? No, I said Clay would run over that and he's coming well, in and turn the water. Clay will put it back up. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> that way, everybody coming in is going to see it. If they go on tennis court, if they go on to the Oh, it'd be out of the way of the mowers. That's my. Oh, oh, I'm talking about on a post, like yeah, uh, I can see a like yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it, you know, sorry yeah. to hang on, not just straight up. But, yeah. <coughs> That's my suggestion. <coughs> I'll go along with you on that. Where, where did you? Where did you talk about putting it? Right in the center of the driveway. Yeah, you know, before, before you come in, right, record the, I mean, for the, oh, the pass on the yeah, yeah, just inside of the water, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And uh, we also need to, I'm sorry, we need to kind of decide on the actual size. We're thinking about that. It needs to be big enough to, so that you can read yeah. it and see it. Well, a tube or two. They, they can make it any way you want yeah. to. Is that three foot? No. Mm -hmm. No. That's probably three. That's three, three is too much. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, about two foot square. Yeah, I mean, what you do to the They, they do have a standard size, and I'll reflect what that is. I don't have it right here with me, but I can find that again. But they did mention the standard size, but I think that's left up to us. They just want to know what the message would be, so they could, it would be about a two-week turnaround to make the flight. Somebody could write it, or we could read it. Write it out on a platter or something. 
Yeah, and then we could get an right. idea yeah. from that. You couldn't yeah. read it if I read it. Well, me either. But <laughs> Do we know describe. exactly what we're going to put on? Yeah, yeah. we've yeah. got yeah. that down. Mm -hmm. okay. still kept what you had at okay. the tree. Yeah. Do they? Do they not have something where they would have it on a computer screen and sure. have, have it be laid out? I mean, I'm just thinking. I'm sure they know, could. And, and say, okay, send us what it would look like on a two by two, and right. you know, mm -hmm. two and a, a three or whatever. Yeah. I mean, they should be able to print it out. That's what I was getting out. like a proof. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Like what what they're going to be actually going to send in and get made. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if we can get a proof of them. How high are we talking about? <clears throat> I level it when you walk in. Well, okay. Well, there was a stumble over. About eye level? Well, I don't know if it might be that high. Well, I mean. Okay. Y'all saying four foot high? It's not about like, yeah. 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 So the stand would be, if I'm trying to understand what you're saying, a four foot high metal post that would angle where the plaque sits right yeah. here on that rest on it where people could read it from the front. And it would stick up above the pole. Yes. Yes. So like a wire to me.